All right. Hopefully everyone can see that. Yes, we can. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to present. All right, well, we're so happy to, to be with you all today. Uh, our session is titled Media Wiki as a Tool for Curriculum Aligned um, Teacher Resource Curation, Cracking the Black Box of Classroom Instruction. I'm Michael Lisman. Uh, I'm just gonna give a very brief introduction uh, and Felix, Dr. Felix Alvarado, who's on, on there um, as well, is gonna, is gonna do the bulk of the session. So what is, what is Online Learning Initiative, or OLE as we call ourselves? There's a link there. Um, I, I, we encourage you to take to open that uh, during or after the, the discussion. Get familiar with our website. Uh, if you get really excited, you can, you can support us or share, or share it out. Uh, we are in the middle of a capital campaign. We're a 501c3 registered nonprofit. That's not why we're here today. We're not here to, to, to ask for money. We're here to share uh, what, what, what we're doing and, and to get your ideas. Um, we were set up to sustain uh, and promote online curriculum and resource sharing. It began with a, a vision uh, by Felix, um, uh, 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 very much in the, in the truest sense that he'll discuss a little more of, with cnbguatemala.org, cnbguatemala.org, where he took basically, a, you know, made a Wikipedia for teachers out of the curriculum uh, that they were trying to socialize there. And it became an immensely uh, a highly used a resource at, at the school level. What I'll just, you know, I, I, I'm the board member of, of OLE and my day job is as I work at USA, the Agency for National De uh, Development in Washington, D.C. So I'll just tell you what's interesting to me about OLE. Why did I join it? Why am I here today? Why am I interested in promoting this? From a curriculum access perspective, what this does is, as folks here know better than I, MediaWiki is an access equalizer. And in, the, in Latin America, curriculum, uh, especially new or recently reformed um, curricula for teachers, it's very hard to socialize. They often exist as PDFs, if you're lucky, on a website deep in the middle of, of, their, of, their, of their page. And they're often, um, they're often not clear, they're often hard to print out. So just actually getting them modularized on uh, a Wikipedia page, accessible, easy um, for everybody is, is actually quite a bit of a, of a novelty. From an education donor perspective, and I can speak directly to that, there are so few education innovations that, and this is where we get the, the, the title from, crack the black box of the classroom in, in such a piercing and, and efficient way that this, that this does. We are able to, and this is where I come from with the third point, for teacher-driven perspective, this is able to reach teachers, quote unquote, where they're at in a way that really doesn't exist uh, very often and certainly not uh, as efficiently and cheaply uh, as, as this tool does. They are able to um, provide on time, just in time, as we call it, resources where teachers' heads, where their heads are at, which is often, how am I gonna teach the next day's class? Uh, what resources do I have to get that prepared? So why are we here? Uh, like I said, we wanna socialize in this short period of time, we wanna socialize the experiment that Old's undertaken started in Guatemala, we're trying to do it in other places and other countries in the in Latin America region. And secondly, we really wanna elicit your feedback, your ideas and your connections. Uh, we, we, I personally am new to this. Felix is um, a, bit of a, a bit of a renaissance man when it comes to this and other things, but we really, we're, the main reason that we, we thought this was a good place to present and learn from you guys was because of, of the work uh, that you guys do um, so cross-cuttingly. So feel free to reach out to me if you have questions, but, but um, in the meantime, let me just pass it over to Felix to tell you a little more in detail about what we're doing. Well, thanks very much, Michael. And thanks to all of you for being here with us. Um, yes, um, I will, uh, if I may share my screen now, uh, give me just a sh second. Should be seeing me now. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go over this uh, rather quickly, and I think Michael has fortunately already covered some of the ground, so that'll make it a bit faster. I'm going to present from within the website because it makes it a bit easier to show you what it's about. So it's, as he said already, it's it's the curriculum on, in wiki format, and uh, what that means is uh, having the full content of the curriculum for every grade, every level, everything there is that has been published uh, in the Guatemalan curriculum is accessible and available to teachers uh, from uh, this one place. Uh, the second thing it is, 
is aligned open uh, educational resources. So increasingly, and this is still a very much a, a work in progress, uh, linked to the specific uh, matrices of the curriculum, teachers can access uh, resources to actually teach the contents that are specified there, the competencies that are specified. And the reason for this and the importance of this is many of our teachers aren't particularly skilled. Uh, so it's not enough to just say, you know, oh, go do this. Uh, you actually can help them a lot if you, if, you, if you tell them how to do it or if you give them resources with which they can do it. And the resources are uh, both available on site and we're trying to move in this direction because that way we have a bit more guarantee that things will be available. This is, is an example of, a, of, of a early grade uh, reading instruction material. Each of the, each of the, of the resources has the instructions for the teacher, instructions for the students, uh, the materials, they can be, you know, uh, printed, downloaded, whatever. Uh, but then also uh, lots of resources that are off-site, and this is just, you know, X material from Argentina. And the key here is what we do is we take these resources and we align them with the Guatemalan curriculum through the metadata that the, these are the, the, the competencies, the indicators, the, the, the the content areas that the that our curriculum requires and so when a teacher needs to consult the curriculum they can find resources even if they're not developed in guatemala for guatemala uh, but they're already aligned with with their curriculum so they find them when they need them uh, the third thing in the the site is is uh, uh, teacher development resources so for example guides uh, for using the website itself as you can imagine uh, you know, a variety of tests, uh, the, the tools for uh, using the curriculum that the ministry itself has put through, and, uh, and a variety of other resources, uh, manuals, for example, in this case, uh, Michael was mentioning USAID, uh, something that was developed by a project in, in Guatemala, funded by USAID with the Ministry of Education, and then they went on and funded the digitization so that we could put it online uh, on the website and then teachers can access it there. Uh, with the idea that we can help them develop their skills as teachers. So not everything is within the framework of the curriculum strictly aligned, but yes, uh, for, the being, for being able to, to actually teach better. Uh, then we also have quizzes, which uh, for a growing number of uh, contents, this obviously takes a lot more work uh, that teachers can use and self-apply self to, to test their, their mastery of content that they have read, read. This they can do just for their own benefit, test and see if they've actually understood what they're reading, but they can also uh, register for our certification program. And if they do that, then uh, they can actually earn uh, badges, open badges, which certify uh, the, the mastery that they have demonstrated. And this again is, is self-administered, but the tests are, are, are automated, so they don't have a, a say in that, let's put it that way. Uh, then uh, the website, as Michael was already suggesting, uh, has been operating since 2012. So it's this, we're into our ninth year at this point. It's private, it's voluntary, it's nonprofit. Uh, everything is uh, strictly open. So we publish with a, with a Creative Commons uh, uh, license and everything we include is, is open license. That includes, fortunately, the ministry publishes everything with, a, with an open license too. So, so it's, it's available. Uh, access is entirely free. Uh, all content can be used without uh, having a, without logging in. The only exception would be uh, if you want to be able to save, you know, your favorites, or if you want to take the, the the quizzes for the for the certification. Then obviously you have to reveal yourself to the system so that can actually track uh, your performance. But other than that, it just everything's uh, available uh, uh, for free and with no no restriction. Uh, the, the content comes from a variety of sources. We have most of the material comes from the Ministry of Education, either that we have digitized or that they have digitized themselves. And I put this, this example because this was developed by, by the directorate for, for assessment there, and they digitized it themselves on the website. Again, it's a wiki, so anybody can essentially go in and add content. Uh, then we also have content from a variety of donors. This is an example of a collection that was developed by the MCC or with MCC funding, so Millennium Challenge Corporation of the US. Uh, they, they developed uh, the teacher 
uh, development uh, resources in, uh, in language, math, sciences, and a couple of other areas. Again, uh, resources for the teachers to improve their understanding of the content areas of the various, uh, of the various key areas that had been found to be weak in, in, in teacher skills. But it's all available. They, they put it online. They funded the digitization. Uh, NGOs, uh, there is for, uh, sorry, didn't mean to show that yet. So, so this material was developed by, a, by an institute in Guatemala that does a work in social sciences and, and uh, contemporary history. They agreed with the ministry to develop these, these manuals, which uh, essentially help the teachers to, to develop the, the, the social sciences curriculum for every grade and secondary. And uh, they themselves also digitized the, this content on the website on their own. Uh, and finally, individuals. Uh, this is a nice example uh, because uh, Raquel Montenegro is a, is a professor at the University of Guatemala. And she uh, set her students in, in a class uh, the task of developing uh, resources for a grammar for the teachers. And each student had to develop one or more uh, resources. And uh, Raquel uh, made them course requirements. So they had to actually produce them. And then she guarantees quality because she assessed them to, 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 to implement them. And then we just put them online. And here we are. And they are, in fact, I must say, one of the greatest hits. Uh, nothing has very much use because everything, everybody goes to each item. But this is one of the ones that actually gets a lot of hits. It would appear that teachers actually value what they, what they are, are seeing. Uh, and I think Michael was already saying it's an, an issue of access. Michael, uh, the, the last mile problem of getting the curriculum, ministry had published the curriculum in hard copy a long time ago, never got to the schools, never got to all the teachers. Uh, this, this is in their pocket and in, in their phone or on their computer. The other thing which is really important is that it brings things together just in time. So it's not just the curriculum here and then go and find uh, resources when you need them or you know, trawls through, through thousands of blogs and repositories or whatever. No, you, you know what you need to teach and now you can find how you're gonna teach it and what you're gonna teach it with because it's all available there and coordinated. It would appear to make sense. It would seem that the teachers are valuing it over the last years, last eight years, it's really grown in use. Uh, we're up to 140,000 unique visitors per month uh, in 2019. Uh, to put this in, in, in perspective, Guatemala has 203,000 teachers. So if, if they're not all Guatemalan teachers, but if they were, we are reaching a significant uh, proportion of them. And this gets really interesting when we look at this year. So these are the numbers for 2020. And uh, if you, this, this line here, I put the, the, the average for last year, so 140,000. And uh, this is the time when the pandemic hits and there's lockdown. And you can see that use has just absolutely skyrocketed. October had 330,000 visitors. And uh, I like this quote from, from Michael Trucano in the World Bank because it explains it perfectly. You know, it was there, it was cheap, it works, they know how to use it, and so they use it. So it just happened to be that we were in the right place at the right time when the pandemic hit. And more importantly, the teachers could actually find us and use what we had to offer them. And uh, the other thing that's really interesting is what has happened in terms of where people are coming from. Uh, in the past, no, not even 25% of visitors were from outside Guatemala, and it makes a lot of sense. You know, you're talking about the country curriculum, uh, so it, 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 you know, it's it's very focused. But since uh, the pandemic and over this year. We're talking about 41% approximately of users coming in from other countries. Mexico is now the, the big second place, we might say, but the rest are, are Latin America, as you would imagine, uh, and visiting uh, using OERs. They obviously still don't need our curriculum, but they can use the OERs and they're finding that they're, they're helpful and they're, they're of good quality. And so people are accessing it. OK, so what does this mean for MediaWiki uh, and the curriculum? Why bring these two things together? Uh, 
And uh, Felix, just a quick, just a quick shout. I think we have about three minutes left. Okay. Uh, Michael mentioned uh, the, the the nature of your wiki as a, as, a, as encyclopedic, and uh, it makes it very easy to handle the curriculum as encyclopedic content. But it also lets uh, you link new content to old content. I won't go into the details of how your wiki does it, but it does it very easy. And this is the one I'd like you to focus on because the curriculum is limited. It's general. And it's in, um, related to an innu um, uh, innumerable OERs, which might or not uh, be specific, uh, but you can very easily link one to the other. Secondly, you can have a lot of people working on this. And third, here's where it gets, I think, really interesting. You can share things across curricula. Uh, so I can develop an OER, but you need it. Well, you can link it to yours. You develop an OER and I can use it. Well, we link it this way and it goes back. Uh, it, MediaWiki makes that very easy. Um, I, I think I just skipped that one. Uh, it also invites us to think about doing a curriculum, building the curriculum particip in a participatory manner. Maybe that's, maybe that's what we need to think about. So what happens next? Where do we go with this? Uh, we can look at the data. Michael already said that. Let's use the data to think about what it means for curriculum design and what it means for uh, teacher behavior. Second, let's look at users. How can we get teachers to be more uh, active producers of shared open educational resources and not just consumers of, of information? Third, uh, can we ask questions about how the curriculum is designed? The issue of, well, what happens if we design a curriculum together instead of it being the expert someplace uh, doing it? And, but then is it, is it desirable? And then what about the technology? Should we be thinking about uh, building something like WikiHow? You know, they started with MediaWiki and now, now they have their own, let's say, fork of the, of the technology. Or should we continue the way we're going? It seems to have worked so far. It's something to, to ask about. And then finally, about sustainability. Um, should we building be seeking buy-in from government or other stakeholders? How should this be financed? It's, it's very cheap, really, proportionately. But it still needs funding. It still needs resources. And uh, one that I would like to highlight is, uh, do we monetize uh, and micro-pay teachers for their contributions? Uh, teachers develop OERs on their own. They share them with other teachers. They can share them with other teachers. Should they get compensated by other teachers for that contribution on that way? We can also encourage them uh, to put more into the system so that everybody wins. And so I would leave it there. Uh, thank you for your, for your uh, time. Uh, please do uh, contact us at our emails and, and visit us at the website. You can contact us that way too. You can contact us through the through the Senere Guatemala uh, website too, if you wish. It has a, a, an email application there. And I will leave there. And then if there are any questions and comments, well, uh, thank you very much. We really appreciate them. Right on the minute, Felix. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I've seen Michael answer some of the questions in the chat. Thank you very much for that, Michael. There's so much more that we could talk about this. I was fortunate enough to have a conversation with Felix a few days ago, and he gave me a walkthrough of this, and it's, it's an amazing tool. I'm sure that the conversation will continue in OEG Connect. 20 minutes again flew very quickly, and there's so much more that we would like to discuss with you guys. But thank you, thank you very much for sharing this wonderful work